Hey everybody, I'm here at Mission Tech. It is an event put on by TDI and uh, it is designed for divers to come and, and try the newest technology and equipment in the tech diving world. My mission while I was here was to dive a rebreather. I've never done it before and I was really curious what it would be like. One of the rebreathers that I dove was the Inspiration. And uh, I talked to Brian Thomas, I did a little interview with him. Here's what he had to say about it. You are representing what rebreather here? It's the AP family of rebreathers. Um, Silent Diving is the North American Caribbean distributor for Silent Diving. For, sorry, for AP family of rebreathers. So the Inspiration Evolution, Evolution Plus, now called the XPD, the EVP, and the EVO. One of the things that I was sh shown with your rebreather is that it really is idiot proof. I mean, you got, it, it's going to keep you alive even if you try to stop it. I hate using the term idiot proof because just when you think you have it idiot proof, someone goes out and makes a better idiot. Um, they are very user friendly. They are extremely safe. They have a lot of uh, backup systems working simultaneously um, to keep it as safe as humanly possible. That's a good answer. When you and I went out diving with it, I had difficulty with my buoyancy because it was like diving your open water class and doing your first dive again for me. It is. What do you Absolutely. see as, as often as the case that, that beginners have a trouble with? Uh, so buoyancy is the number one thing for sure. Um, it is completely different. You're on a closer. So in open circuit, you take a nice deep breath in, you start to float up a little bit, you go up and over that rock and then you exhale and you go back down a little bit and you continue on. With a rebreather, you take a deep breath in, you don't go up or down, you take an exhale, you don't go up or down. <laughs> so you have to learn to swim side to side. And then because we were shallow, um, it's a little harder to maintain your buoyancy on a rebreather in shallow water. Now near the end of the dive, we were better, but it was at the beginning, right? So I could get you down, there was no problems, and then you trimmed out really nice, and then off you went. And you were fine as long as we kept it like 16 or 20 feet or 25 feet, you were good. Because when you got to six feet, that all of a sudden, because that, that's where a really big change happens in buoyancy, right? The pressure is a lot less, therefore the gases in the counter lungs expand, and you're managing an extra airspace that you're not used to, the counter lungs. So in my case, I was diving a dry suit, you were diving a wetsuit. So you were, you're used to diving a wetsuit, managing your, your lungs. Now you're dealing with your lungs and your counter lungs and your BCD instead of just your lungs and your BCD. Got it. So it's that extra level of complexity that, that'll get you at first, and then it, it levels up. What am I missing? Uh, that everybody should be diving a rebreather. <laughs> and if they are diving a rebreather and need someone to help them pick the right one and, and instruct them, who should they call? Uh, I mean, I'll give you an honest answer on anything that I can. Um, yes, I have a favorite. I, I work with AP. Um, I think that the AP product is, I personally believe it's the best. Um, and I have reasons why. There are other units that have other features. Um, or different features or built differently for different purpose and so sometimes your needs may be better met by a different family of rebreathers. Um, I don't have a problem telling people. I'll gladly answer any questions. Brian at silentdiving.com uh, is my email address and I don't have a problem. Absolutely. I'd love to have the opportunity to talk to more people about rebreathers. All right. Appreciate it. Thank Thanks you so much. much. So what were my thoughts of the inspiration? Well, I found it easier to breathe underwater with the Inspiration than I did one of its competitors. However, I had a much more difficult time maintaining my buoyancy. I was constantly finding myself floating to the surface to swim back down, to float to the surface to swim back down. It, it got pretty frustrating. You know, when you, if you choose to, to switch into the rebreather world, one of the things that you're going to learn is that it's kind of like stepping from from step one. Um, it's a new experience. The skills that you have learned uh, as an open circuit diver, some of them will transfer over, but some of them will not. For instance, when you exhale open circuit, you expect to descend. That's not the case with rebreather, and that's probably why I had such difficulty going up and down. Um, you know, one of the things that you have to consider is these things are expensive pieces of equipment. And if you're the kind of diver that wants to get a whole lot of bottom time, and uh, you're thinking about multiple tanks for your dives. I mean, that's how long you're looking to stay down and, and you're thinking about decompression and, and training in those techniques. Then a rebreather may very well be right for you. Uh, for your average recreational diver, I don't know. It's kind of a hard sell for me. Uh, it's a high price point and I'm not sure that the advantages uh, are worth that price. However, if you're looking, I would, I personally would consider the inspiration. I thought it was a solid rebreather, and I hope this helps. 
dive safe. <laughs>